no matter where you go in, in the United States, there's a small Armenian community somewhere and everybody kind of has a similar story. Their family during the genocide was dispersed and you know, what, what made them end up where they are today. So the story is that April 24th, 1915, my, grand, my great grandfather was murdered by the Ottoman Turks in Constantinople. And then my grandfather, Asador, who was five at the time, wakes up, his sisters are all gone, he don't know where they went, and his mother is dead next to him. So these Ottoman Turk army people took him and w what was common at the time is they just took them and placed them with Turkish families to be used as slaves. Fast forward then 18 years later there's a man at the Turkish Syrian border and at that time everyone was still looking for all the people that they lost you know like putting together their families and he, he said Parev, hello in Armenian and um, my grandfather said Parev and he said are you Armenian he said yes and that right there strikes me that my grandfather still knew he was Armenian this man knew Higna, um, Asador's oldest sister. So they went for months. They traveled back and forth to the Turkish-Syrian border, this man and Higna. And they finally, he came back on horseback. Higna says, you're my brother, Asador. You know, we lost you. And he said, yes, I was lost in the genocide, I remember that, but you're not my sister. My sisters are Anig and Vartanush, who were closer in age to him. So he knew them. He didn't know his oldest sister. She was probably more than 12 years older than him. They convinced him. They said, okay, Anig and Vartanush are in Aleppo. Let's go. They weren't. So they were already in the United States and Niagara Falls. They, they married and left. So they still got Asador to go back to Syria and they showed him this picture. And this picture was taken specifically to show Asador that um, Anig and Vartanush were in Niagara Falls with their fam with their husbands and their children. That was enough to keep him there. He made a life for himself. He became a tailor. He made married another Armenian woman that escaped the genocide. And he ended up having four kids. One of them was my dad Varujan. So my dad Varujan came to Niagara Falls when he was 18 in the 60s. And Asador came a few years later. So in the meantime, he's never seen in his sister in person since before they were broken up during the genocide. In December 30th, 1973, and this is an article I've always seen as a kid because it, it was, it's in the family album. In the Niagara Gazette, it says, Sister, Brother United in Falls after 59 years. And that's our family story that Cousin D told us. You know, since, it, since I've gotten older, it definitely hits home. You know, a sadness comes out because it's my family history. Um, you know, the, the, when I'm telling this story, a lot of times people be like, where is Armenia? And so then I'll have to go back and show them on the map because, you know, throughout school, they don't, 
they don't really teach about the Armenian Genocide. If they do, they touch on it very, very briefly um, you know, during World War I time period. And I'll have to give them a history lesson on that. You know, everyone hears about you know the Holocaust and things like that. So I'll always relate it to that, to where they can get some context about the the murders and you know the, how everyone was dispersed. Um, but there's definitely some sadness. But I, I try to turn that sadness into a positive. Um, you know, there's one piece of the Armenian history that is tragic and terrible. But there's a lot of good that comes um, in the with the Armenian history. So when you, when you tell a story, you can easily read it in a textbook, but you're going to get a high level you know, overview of whatever the topic was. Um, these family stories aren't in textbooks, and you know if they're not passed generation to ge generation, they get lost over time, and that's a piece of history that goes away. I feel all those people that survived this genocide, they remembered their background. So we should remember our background so therefore we can thrive.